And you can see as I uh, begin entering, you can. it also says, you can see that I have table two there. So there's tables listed within this list. If I go down, these are in alphabetical order, you can see that I have Todd's table. So I can select Todd's table. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to open up brackets. Whenever I open up brackets, it gives me a choice. Um, gives me a list of choices I can select items you know these are basically the columns the column row, the columns I can select um, in my brackets quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four and then of course this says quarter 42 I have to go and change that that would be total <clears throat> then you can see there's all hashtag all hashtag data headers totals um, if I were to select quarter one and then close my brackets now you can look up here this is selected quarter one within Todd's table and then, so if I were to close now if I were to close that it's gonna use quarter one within Todd's table as an argument that range of cells to find the sum and it will find the sum of those and just as you can see in the total row we got 300,000 okay um, equals sum now if you start memorizing your tables if this is something that you work um, a, a, an Excel worksheet that you work in a lot you could start memorizing your tables and right there hit Todd and then uh, it automatically appeared I just selected it open brackets I can <clears throat> select the quarters I can um, use all of them as arguments if I want separate my arguments by parentheses again Todd's table and then again open my brackets select quarter two close my brackets and I could continue to do that just make I'm just gonna make sure that I separate all of them by um, parentheses all right but looks like my battery is about to die you can see it poor planning okay so um, <clears throat> that's basically cell, uh, cell reference with tables I could keep going on, but really it's just best for you to um, play with it and learn it on your own. I mean, that's a lot of how I learned how to use Excel. Um, I guess I'll do this a little bit more just so you can see some examples. Okay, open the brackets. If I were to select all, that's going to select the entire table. I'm going to close my brackets. And it's going to give me the result of all... It's going to give me the sum of all uh, quantitative data that's um, in the cell. I could do data that's just, just going to give me the sum of all um, quantitative data, the same as all. Um, headers, that doesn't really make sense. Our headers are qualitative data, so we'd, we wouldn't want to find the sum of headers, but that's what it would do. Uh, totals. There it's giving me the sum of all totals. And, you know, again, this is just cell reference. This will work for many different functions, but I'm just kind of showing you how um, when you use tables, you can refer to cells by names and column headers instead of just cell, um, generic cell addresses. Okay, uh, now the next thing I'm going to go over is circular reference. What circular reference is is whenever you refer to a cell when you insert a um, function or a formula into a cell and that function or formula refers to the cell that it's inserted in and what I mean is you can see um, here I'm going to insert some data and then in cell B9 I'm going to say equals cell B7 plus cell B8 plus cell B9 and B9 is a cell that I'm inserting this formula into and then when I hit enter you can see that there's a circular reference within our formula and that could cause our formula to calculate incorrectly and more than likely it would you can see there we just get a zero when I hit um, <clears throat> when I pressed OK okay another if you want to learn more about circular reference you can go ahead and enter in a circular reference type of formula just like this Uh, I'll do it over here. Plus 
See, I already pressed OK, so it solved the problem. But if you click Help, um, Excel will give you a window that will provide you details of circular reference so you can learn more. You can also just click on the Help tab and navigate through that to learn more about it. Um, okay, there's times when circular reference, you can uh, use circular references to your advantage, and there's times you're just going to need to do it. Um, it's going it's to be a lot easier than trying to run through the calculations over and over and over again in your head or on paper. Why not just use Excel? Okay, so you can see here I have um, <clears throat> basically just a little um, model I threw together. Uh, we have a company that has revenues of $1.5 million, expenses of $600,000, and then we're going to have salaries. The company pays the company the employee salaries based on the net profit, so they're commission based, 10% of net profits. The problem here is our net profits are going to be revenues minus expenses minus salaries, so our net profits are dependent upon um, revenues, expenses, and salaries, but salaries is dependent on net profit. So salaries and net profit are dependent on each other. Um, our formula for net profit or for salaries would be 0.1, which is 10% times our net profit. So I have to equal, I should know that, equals 0.1 times our net profit. Then we have a circular reference there. Okay, I don't know why this is saying value giving me a value error minus okay but there we have a circular reference problem um, <clears throat> because net profit is dependent on salaries and salaries is dependent on net profit um, the way that we f can resolve this problem is by allowing Excel to um, enable iteration calculations so I'm going to click file go to options Click the formulas tab and then over here in the calculation options I'm going to enable iterative calculation. I'm going to keep the maximum iterations at 100 and the maximum change. Press OK and what it did was it ran, ran the um, calculation through as many iterations as it needed to until our salaries um, were 10% of our net profit. And so in, it will run as many iterations as it needs to until um, you reach a desired result. All right, so there is an intentional circular reference that you could use to your advantage. Okay, the one other thing I'm going to cover, and just kind of winging this part of this tutorial, um, you can refer to cells within other worksheets and other workbooks. So you, um, here I'm going to insert a formula into cell C6 there and then I'm going to click on a different tab and refer to that cell plus that cell and then I will refer to a cell within this worksheet and then I'll just hit enter and there you can see that uh, we have a result we didn't have a problem at all. Let me click on formulas. Click on show formulas. Expand this a little bit. So you're going to see that I hit equals and mixed. That's the name of that worksheet. And so we're going to have the name of the worksheet separated by an um, exclamation point. And then we have the cell address. So what that's saying is this sheet mixed sheet name exclamation point cell address plus again um, plus this is within that cell D, Todd's table totals so it's referring to the table even though we went to a different sheet this time it didn't even have to specify the sheet because it was a table and Excel knows that, that table is within that sheet so it didn't even need to specify it because it's within a table so plus Todd's table and then, of course, the brackets, which we went over earlier, totals, the totals um, in Todd's table, 